Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the College of Complexes. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, tonight we're having a debate over who is the most suitable presidential candidate. Uh, arguing for Hillary Clinton is Michael Brennan. Arguing for Donald Trump is Charles Kadok impersonating a Donald Trump supporter. And then uh, Ted Aranda will be arguing uh, for none of the above. Uh, this is meeting. 3398. The college has three rules. One is one fool at a time, the other is no personal attacks, and during the question and answer period, it is a question. We will start off with announcements, uh, then we will have our debate. In the debate, it will be ten, two rounds of the three speakers, ten minutes each. Um, and then after that, we'll have a question and answer period where you will ask questions, not make statements. And then finally, after the Q&A, we will have the rebuttal, our infamous rebuttal session where you can. Now, this is our waitress. This is Heather. Yay. And Heather. Heather takes care of us. If you have any questions and concerns, you go straight to Heather. Please be sure to tip her, but she is in charge of this room. And we have to be out of here by 8.45. Since there's no other announcements, it's time to uh, move on to our main presentation. Uh, starting the debate is Charles Paydock. Uh, Paul, do you have a timer? Should I take out my cell phone? Uh, take out your phone. Okay, you're going to have 10 minutes, but you can't start until I say go. Just a sec. Well, the preliminary is not taken against my time. Well, this is an intro. You have only 10 minutes. No, I have a intro. It's not deducted. I'm giving you a little history of this thing. Um, well, welcome to our traditional uh, pre-presidential election debate. We've been doing this at the College of Complexes for a number of years. Um, as a matter of fact, at one time, we had any number of registered candidates for the Office of Presidency of the United States from the College of Complexes. We actually had four at one time, and we even had a speak out at one of the conventions uh, regarding candidates like this. Uh, a little disclaimer, um, I'm going to be representing uh, the candidacy of Donald Trump, uh, so my challenge whether or not I'm authorized to do so. Now, in the history of the college, we had a fellow called Burr McCloskey. And Burr McCloskey spoke to the college 49 years in a row, at least once a year. And once in a while, a speaker doesn't show at the college complexes. And Mr. McCloskey, Burr used to say, I'll speak. He said, and he'd ask me, he said, Charles, do you want me to speak pro or against the topic? He was so assured of his own skills that he could take a position either way on any issue. So that's somewhat what I'm doing tonight. In all honesty, I am and have been for many, many years an officer, the, the National Affairs Committee Chair for the Independent Voters of Illinois. I make monthly reports to uh, the IVI on affairs in Congress and have been a lobbyist for at least 35 years going to Washington representing various issues and organizations uh, <clears throat> that I'm particular to in both an official and unofficial capacity. But okay, uh, would you let me know when I got five minutes? Okay, let's get started here. Um, now, Basically, when it comes to the campaign of Donald Trump, uh, we're limited to only possibly one TV network, uh, maybe a few syndicated radio shows, and a couple internet sites, and the rest of the media is all controlled by those lefties. And that's why this program tonight is Donald, is Donald Trump's vision without the media lies. And I've tried to be objective in this, and I've gotten most of this material off of his website, which you can go to. But basically, what are we confronted with in this campaign? is nothing but media lies. 
this is what he's had to deal with each day, one after another, are tossed at him. The latest one is now they got 12 women who's claiming, oh, he got friendly with them. Or it's, oh boy, you know, it lies, just lies. Okay, what's the next one? Oh, um, the other, wait, you went too fast. Oh, now the other thing is, no doubt from time to time you've seen these spokespersons on TV. First it was Pearson, Katrina Pearson with her bullet, bullet necklace. And now <laughs> uh, Conway has had mercilessly been confronted by the likes of CNN on anything that comes up or anything Mr. Trump has to say on an issue. And they're doing a commendable uh, effort in that regard. Uh, just to show you, if you dispute me about this, there's take a little thing that this is just on the news, that um, each of the major networks news, they looked at it, and these are watched by 24 million people. Anyhow, I don't, they only spent 57 seconds, one minute, on Crooked Hillary's emails, and 23 minutes they went after Mr. Trump on some alleged womanizing. This shows you the distortion in there. And that's why Mr. Trump had to resort to banning certain media organizations like the Washington Post, Politico, and so forth from his rallies, because they didn't want to tell the truth. That's what we're confronted with. Now this was just last week in Florida that Trump routinely exhorts the crowds at his rallies to boo the journalists who travel with his campaign. What's going on here? Uh, and then he has to Twitter, resort to Twittering to counter th their coverage here. Uh, he's even attacked, had to mention reporters by name. And that's why you see Donna Decker here, she's telling the news media, to, to, why don't you tell the truth, you know? There should be more Americans like her. But he says these people are among the most dishonest people in the world. Uh, the media, he said at a rally in Florida last week, pointing to reporters at the back of the room. He said they are the worst, and they are. Now look at this, I'll show you how to, they're the worst. We all saw that they took in one or more of the three debates. It's clear from anybody that Mr. Trump won easily all three debates. There's no dispute on that. Everybody knows that. Um, let's see. Now, here's another thing. I don't know if you people were aware of this, some of the things that came out, but you can see here, right there, Hillary has an earpiece. Not only it came out, it was alleged, not only did she get the questions in advance, she probably wrote them, and then she had this look at listening to get a few little things on what to say. This is the kind of stuff that's going on in the USA. And we got to do something about that. Another issue that came up, and I was on, on Fox News about this, but uh, there's paid protesters. This guy was in Arizona. He was recruited from Craigslist. And they gave him $3,500 to protest. And then they asked, who, who asked you in all this? And he said the group was a group called Women Are the Future. Now what group do you think that is from? Women Are the Future, come on. Look at this, we've heard it, look at show up. Hooligans disrupting Mr. Trump, trying to talk to his constituents here. Look at some of the photos here. Look at this guy. You're up to no good if you got to wear a mask. That's what I say. You know. Look at this. They took a, a, a Trump hat off the guy, probably some old lady, and they burned it. And look at this guy. Look at that. This guy. It was the last time you saw him do any work. Well, I got to tell you. And look at him. Welcome Muslims. Who in their right mind is going to welcome Muslims? Oh, come on, send a whole lot of Muslim. Get out of here. Comes up with this stuff. That's what's going on here. All right, next topic. Everybody knows this is a rigged election. Yeah, go out and vote. Oh, go vote and all this, you know. 
By the way, if anybody wants, give me your voter card. I'll vote for you. I'll say give it back to you next week. You know, that's how you do it in Chicago here. But look at it. And they were campaigning to get people to be a Trump election observer here. Yeah, that's obviously, they got this election cooked in advance, you know. And it's about time somebody spoke out about this. Uh, oops. Now, here's another thing. A lot of you may not know about this. This is, this is a Trump traitors. If you are in a Green Party, like I am on occasion, you can contact somebody in a safe state and trade votes. But they got Trump trading going on. All right, now vote here. Oh, I like this year. Mexican voting. Uh, they're even, it was reported, they're allowing illegals to cross the border and come in the vote. He mentioned this to us when he spoke to the meeting of the, the border agents. Uh, like your vote hoy aquí. What's that? Vote aquí. You know. All right, now this is amazing. It's the Democrats who come along and go to court and they accuse the Republicans of voter suppression. Where do they get that from? Anyhow, there's an old uh, thing out there, but they're claiming that unfairly they're going for votes of young women, black voters, and white liberals. Okay, now regarding crooked Hillary, and if you want to join me in the chant to lock her up, I'll be glad to lock her up, yeah. Anyhow, these, these email charges, Anyhow, Mr. Trump has promised that he's going to get to the bottom of this thing. And I say not only lock her up, lock up Bill and that Chelsea gear dog in there, too. Because she's on it, too, with that foundation stuff. Everybody knows that. And then, oh, they jump on Mr. Trump for running this. The government came down on it. He gave up, and he had a club, and he closed down the university because the government regulators were on his case. When the people was a good school, it provided the term uh, learning, the good learning to people in the real world. And uh, it's not Mr. Trump's fault that the real estate market collapsed in 2008, or these people didn't apply themselves um, to what they were trying to teach them. They shouldn't be, be blamed for those people who had complaints about the school. Um, official positions. I don't know if we have time for all this. I'll just jump through real quickly. The economy is going to give us 25 million jobs. Hey, come on, let's put America to work. Uh, immigration. Hey, lock them up. That's what I say. Round them up. And let's do something about this once and for all. Energy. Clean coal. Dig it up. Burn it. Heck, man, we've got $50 trillion <coughs> of energy. We shouldn't be buying energy from nobody. Anybody who knows that. Let's build the military. Build ships, 350 ships, 1,200 fighters. Build up the army, half a million army soldiers. That's what you need in the United States here. There it is. You know, Hillary can start wars, but she sure doesn't know how to fight them. That's for sure. Regulation, government regulations. Mr. Trump says he's going to get rid of two regulations for every one that should remain. Get rid. Of, he's going to get rid of clean power plants and this water regs. Get rid of this stuff. Uh, the Muslims get going to take out ISIS, you know, and guns. He ain't going to take away nobody's guns, you know. Um, Bring back pro programs like Project Exile, where you fit people out of the neighborhood. Anyhow, that's pretty much it. I'll bring up the other ones on my next time through. Anyhow, I think that's a nice round little thing of what's cooking here regarding uh, uh, issues here regarding their campaign. And I'm listening, looking forward to hearing to what my colleagues have to say about this. Thank you very much. And I'll be right Make America great. Go through. Great. In Japan. That's what she said. What? I know. I think I got cheated. Lock up these lefties.
Okay. Michael Brennan has the floor. All right, to start with, since we've referred to the statements from the uh, there's a group called factchecker.org with Washington Post, which has examined the Trump statements. Let's start with Iraq. He claims that he wanted to get out of Iraq. Can't hear me? Talk louder? Okay. Uh, okay. Take the mouse and click on from current slide. Pardon? Okay. Okay, stop in the time. Yeah, why are you such a maniac at time? Um, Relax. No, okay, no, you're fine. Okay, um, he claimed he was opposed to Iraq being invaded. That doesn't work either. Maybe I should put it back up here. That helps. There's, there's no evidence that has been produced. If, if Trump had evidence, why didn't he produce it about opposing the war in Iraq? Actually, what we do have evidence of is Ray, uh, Stern's radio interview, where he asked... Do you want to fix this? supported the invasion of Iraq, and Trump said, yes, I guess so. And, you know, there have been other studies that have looked at 80 statements of Trump and Clinton to see how true they were. They ranked them on a level of one to four Pinocchios as far as how truthful. The worst level is four Pinocchios. That's a whopper, utterly whopper. And they found that most, six, over 60% of Donald Trump's statements were whoppers. And this rate was four times as high as Hillary Clinton's rate. So the one thing we know when Donald Trump says something is that his mouth is open. <laughs> so people have worried about that, of course, because as one fact checker person said, even when they tell him, hey, here's the evidence, he keeps repeating the same lies keeps repeating them. The Hillary Clinton campaign, at least they try to figure out, maybe this maybe a mistake. They adjust sometimes. But not Donald Trump. The other thing I'd like to say is, who would we trust to keep us safe? Here's what 122 Republican National Security Advisors or specialists said. That the President Trump would use the authority of his office to act in ways that make America less safe, end quote. And at the end of this statement, which goes on for a long time, all the things wrong with the Trump foreign policy, they say, quote, we commit ourselves to working energetically to prevent the election of someone so utterly unfitted to the office. And here's what Foreign Affairs magazine says in its first presidential announcement in ever, ever. They say, quote, were she to be elected as this country's first woman president, not only would it be historic and send an important signal about our, our inclusiveness and Americans' commitment to electing candidates who have distinguished themselves on their merits, but she would enter office having already put down one great threat to the United States of America, the grotesque 
and deeply disturbing prospect of a Donald Trump presidency, end quote. Maybe you saw a while back in the AARP that they, their bulletin that comes out, they invited both candidates to say what they would do to help Social Security. Trump's answer had nothing about Social Security. It, 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 doesn't ha it didn't have anything to do. It's just the economy, well, if it gets better, Social Security gets better. One thing, he had a lot of tax breaks, or he had some, and one of them was to eliminate the estate tax on those wealthy, multimillionaire Americans like himself. That's his, uh, his idea of what you do about Social Security. And on the other hand, Hillary Clinton did come up with ideas. One of the ideas, which is very important, is that you know people that make over 118,000 or so, they don't pay any money on that extra over 118,000 dollars into Social Security. If they did, that would be a great strengthener of the system. But Donald Trump, that's not him. You know the saying, those who have more can help more? To Donald Trump, it's to those who have more, get more. And that's exactly what his tax program does. Though he denies it, though he says, oh yeah, we'll, we'll be hurt, but no. He is cutting taxes on the very people that we need desperately to have the money for. And for the safety and the stability of our government. <coughs> Remember that crazy idea he had where he said uh, bondholders ought to take a, a haircut? Five minutes. Five minutes, did you say? Okay. All right. And then the question of who would treat American workers more fairly? You remember Donald Trump said our wages are too high. Too high. And he's, he acts like he believes that because he's been cited for 24 violations of the Fair Labor Standards Act for not paying either overtime or minimum wage. Is that the kind of man we want to be, have to be the most powerful man in America? What can we do with a person like that when we have Hillary Clinton, who supports raising the minimum wage? With Donald Trump, what would he do to eliminate, or low, not eliminate, but to lower the minimum wage? We don't know. We can't trust this man. He's already broken so many promises to those workers that he cannot be trusted. The courts have upheld. He was conspiring to take away from people's pensions. You probably read about what he did to the Polish workers in New York. Anyway, I won't tell you everything. We just, there's, so, there's so much to say. The next thing I want to say is, well, Hillary Clinton is endorsed by 38 unions. And according to AFL CEO, IO President Richard Trumpka, her economic plans would add 10 million 400,000 more jobs, whereas the Trump economic plan would lose three and a half million more jobs. So that, these are some of the things to keep in mind. Also, but what about gun violence? Who endorses Donald Trump? The National Rifle Association, which has opposed bans on assault weapons and background checks. Who endorses Hillary Clinton? The Brady campaign against gun violence. So who would we be safer under? And let's think about women, too, how they're treated. Three minutes. Three minutes. Remember when Trump got caught on tape? What was his first apology? Oh, I apologize if anyone is offended. If? Doesn't he know what he said? If anyone is offended? Come on. Do we trust this man as president? And the next point, what I want to remember, remind you of is that <clears throat> Muslims. That's another faith. Some of them help detect terrorists. But now they've been insulted by Donald Trump. You know the story on that. You heard the, the, the family that was at the convention and, and how they talked about their son who died fighting for the United States. And Trump felt like he was insulted. He, did, he sacrifices, doesn't he? What does he sacrifice? He's, his worker sacrifice, his bankrupt company sacrifice, though he figures out ways to keep him a lot of money even when the company goes bankrupt. These are some of the things we need to worry about. Then what about the Mexicans? He's come up with phony statistics about immigrants in this country. Immigrants. <coughs> the same 
kind of law-abidingness as the United States citizens, except for the fact that, of course, they're, it's, they are not, don't have the papers to be here. But as far as illegally here immigrants, but that's not what he said. And then again, he that terrible thing he did about on his website about blacks. Remember, he said whites uh, uh, are attacked. Whites are attacked more by blacks. Whereas the fact is that most of the attacks on whites are by whites. But he, he was challenged on that. He says, well, do you expect me to check every statistic? Yes, we do. When you're talking in public like that, we expect you to make sure you're talking the truth. Those are some of the things we can worry about. One minute. One minute. The Chinese, he said, Oh, they're stealing our jobs. Well, then why did he invest in Chinese jobs for his companies in China? If he says they're stealing our jobs, the Chinese, and of course you've heard all the things he says about anybody that disagrees with him. So there is something that we can do. Uh, I'm, I'm making phone calls for Hillary at her office and, uh, in, in, on 5539 and 5537 North Broadway. We're finding people willing to canvas in Iowa and do other things. But it's going to take us. As Bernie Sanders says, this, is, this, this man is very, very dangerous. And he also says Hillary Clinton is infinitely more qualified to be president. But it's, it's unpredictable, this election. And I think it is it's not just to, to beat this man. We've got to beat him by such a majority that the whole world knows that we do not accept such a disgraceful man. That is what we need to do. I have information that I can pass out about more about these things. I'm just giving you the, the very basic things to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the next speaker will be Ted Aranda. Ted Aranda. Okay, you'll notice the last speaker spoke 90% uh, of his time, if not more, about uh, Donald Trump, even though he's supposed to be uh, advocating for Hillary Clinton. And this is a, a, a typical uh, lesser evil strategy. You have this Godzilla, therefore Dracula looks pretty good. <clears throat> so let's look at this Dracula. This year's presidential election is the most extreme example of lesser evilism in modern American political history. The last outstanding example of this phenomenon was the 1964 election, and of course I'm giving you a little bit of this history here. Uh, the 1964 election, when Democrat Lyndon Johnson ran as the so-called peace candidate against the far-right Republican Barry Goldwater. <clears throat> President Kennedy, involved toward the end of his presidency in an epic contest with the Cold War establishment, was intent on ending the Vietnam War. He had in fact issued an executive order to that effect shortly before he was assassinated. Johnson, an establishment politician through and through, had no interest in reversing the U.S.'s imperialist foreign policy. After Kennedy was eliminated by the shadow government, with LBJ's connivance, if not his direct involvement, and as the next election rolled around, Johnson told the Joint Chiefs of Staff, in other words the military, just get me elected and you can have your war. Johnson kept his promise to the establishment and the military industrial complex, and thereby broke his rosy campaign promise to the people the promise of economic prosperity for the lower classes, what he called the Great Society. You can't have it both ways. Except on a temporary emergency basis like World War II, you can't have an economic policy geared for both the people and the war machine at the same time. With lesser evils like Lyndon Johnson in office to do their bidding, the ruling elite has no need of supposedly greater evils. <clears throat> when Democrat Bill Clinton was elected in 1992, there was a great expectation among progressives that he would take advantage of the peace dividend following the collapse of the Soviet Union and the consequent end of the Cold War. It was naturally assumed by nearly everyone that he would use his go this godsend in the state of international affairs to reorder the country's priorities. But nothing of the sort happened. It was basically more business as usual. Same thing with Obama following Republican George Bush's eight years of warmongering. The Democrat Obama kept on warmongering, just in a slightly different fashion, symbolized by drones, and with a Nobel Peace Prize hanging around his neck. <clears throat> Today, under a Democratic administration, which had Hillary Clinton as its Secretary of State for four years, the U.S. government is killing countless people in half a dozen countries in the Middle East and Northern Africa, all in the name of the utterly bogus criminal War on Terror, a completely lawless program of imperial aggression started by Bush, 
but embraced and perpetuated by Obama. The U.S. is still in Afghanistan, and Guantanamo Bay is still open. The same ever-repeating dynamic of utterly misplaced hope in the Democratic Party applies today, especially with regard to the ongoing climate crisis, a matter literally of planetary life and death. Obama promised to stem global warming, but under him, the U.S. government has allowed and in fact encouraged more extraction of carbon-emitting fossil fuels from our country's lands than ever before, while Hillary Clinton has been flying all over the world promoting fracking. <clears throat> in general, for half a century now, after pretending before each election to be the party of the people, the day after the election, the Democrats have without fail shown their true colors. They're the second party of property, and as criminal as the first. Murderous false flag operations were carried out under LBJ, the assassinations of Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King, and under Bill Clinton, the Oklahoma City bombing. <clears throat> false flag mass shooting hoaxes have been rampant under Obama, for instance, Sandy Hook and Orlando, to name just two. Indeed, they've become his trademark, although the lab dog press neglects to make the obvious connection. Democrat Hillary Clinton was directly involved in another major hoax, the faked assassination of Osama bin Laden, who had actually died years earlier. Those who did die in this staged event were some two dozen members of the involved Navy SEAL team, very likely killed to keep them from revealing the subterfuge they knew about. For so-called progressives to fall for the same sick electoral charade every four years like clockwork, demonstrates that they're either idiots or ignoramuses, no better than Charlie Brown with Lucy in the football. To, support, to participate in American elections is to play a game that you can't win, and that by now you should know you can't win. One party wears a scowl, the other a smiley face. But, after dec but decade after decade, both parties have perpetuated the war machine. Both have done nothing to combat global warming, and both have overseen with equanimity, despite rhetorical hand wringing, the economic rape of the lower and middle classes by the rich. The two parties' differences are cosmetic, having more to do with style than substance. If someone were to come up to you before an upcoming election and tell you that you had to choose between <coughs> A, being burned at the stake, Five minutes. or B, swallowing a bottle of sleeping pills, the proper response would not be to choose either A or B, but to tell them to get the hell away from you before you blow their head off. American elections are about which master is going to take his or her turn placing their boot on your neck. You and everyone else, except the very rich, lose either way. <clears throat> Whichever representative of the ruling class wins, you are not in control. You are not free. The rational, logical, and sensible course of action is to not participate in what amounts to your own enslavement. The other day, I heard uh, an amazing story on NPR, and I'm going to relate this short story to you very quickly. It was about the sinking of the cruise ship Oceanus off the coast of South Africa in 1991 during a big storm. As the ship took on water in the lower decks, the officers, Instead of sounding the alarm and preparing the 570 passengers for evacuation, lied about the condition of the vessel, gathered their personal effects, and made for the lifeboats. After repeatedly trying to escape but getting caught each time, the captain literally sat down in a corner and refused to do anything at all. He was effectively comatose. The entertainment staff, musicians, comedians, <coughs> magicians, took matters into their own hands and organized the lifeboat evacuation of the passengers and crew. When the ship was down to its last usable lifeboat with 200 passengers still on board, aboard the ship that is, the entertainers stayed on the ship while most of the remaining officers got on that last lifeboat and ordered it to be launched even before it was full. <clears throat> Having now assumed command out of necessity, two of the entertainers went up to the bridge and found it empty. They had to call on the radio for help, which they succeeded in doing. They then coordinated an extremely dangerous helicopter rescue of the passengers from the badly listing ship, which included, ha included having to harness the passengers two by two and make sure they were safely lifted into the Navy helicopters in the middle of the raging storm. In the end, the entertainers, along with some of the lower ranking crew, like cooks, succeeded in saving everyone, literally in the nick of time. They were awarded medals for their valor, while the captain was pillaged for his gross misconduct negligence, and cowardice. <clears throat> the case of the Oceanus is a metaphor for the condition of the people in this country and on this planet. Those in command, deriving their privileged authority from the oligarchical political structure we've been living under for centuries, are not merely well-meaning but incompetent. <clears throat> Rather, they are innately uncaring of the common good and criminally selfish toward the common people. We can't count on them to look after our welfare, much less save the Earth. We the people have to sweep them aside, a 
assume command under a new kind of government and save ourselves. Thank you. All right. All right. Get the B key again and you'll be ready to go. All right, start it rolling. All right, if first of all, in response to um, Mr. Brennan, apparently you were a bit busy making calls around the United States on behalf of Hillary, but the other day they had all the employees of Trump's hotel in Florida come out on the lawn and he was there and they all testified that it was an okay place to work and they liked him very much as their boss. One after another they raised their hand and they testified to that effect. So this thing about your AFL-CIO stuff, I got a question. And, and you, sir, Ted, uh, so that the statistics are a little bit off, that, does, that, that doesn't distance us from the the real substance of the point that Mr. Trump is trying to make. So he doesn't get the facts and figures <coughs> correct all the time. So he's a little bit off. Well, that's that's not anything to worry about. And or no, that was you, I think. And the other thing is, uh, there is a difference, significant difference between the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, any, any look at the legislation and how the votes have gone, especially during the past uh, five to ten years, is evidence there's tremendous disparity between the two political entities. But anyhow, we didn't have much chance to go stop and look through these, but these are authentic positions of Mr. Trump from his website. Uh, there you see, I'm a book dealer. I'm, I need business too, you know. And we need to create jobs so I can hire more people to sell books for me. Last year I did was my worst year for selling books at the Printer's World Book Fair. <laughs> what does that tell you? Something's got to be done about that. And we got to grow the economy, Trump says, at three and a half percent or more, even though the economy <laughs> hasn't grown more than 1% in 35 years, but he's going to do it. Immigration! Everybody knows, got to get the more ICE agents out there, rounding them up, collect them all, you know. And I like this here, he wants a biometric entry-level visa. I think everybody should have a biometric measurement. Maybe that's what we need in the United States, you know. But it's, it's, this is for the best interest of the American people in keeping with the historic norms of this country. Lord knows the troubles that we've had with early immigrant groups in the past. The right, right, Butler? And, you know, you go listen to these greedies, you know, oh, save the earth, you know, and so forth. We've got oil, 50 trillion barrels of oil, and all this, and yeah, whatever it is, extract it. Um, drop all this belly aching about uh, pipelines and all that. This clean up, this, this, this is just to placate the lefties and greenies there. That you've got this eco legislation. It's costing us jobs, and that's what we need. All right, and the military within the United States has got to be strong. We've got enemies out there. We need battleships. Uh, battleships? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Nuclear aircraft. Well, I don't know. I, you know, actually, this is a good thing to play can't get votes. There's enormous in the industrial, military industrial complex. There's another in my union. Um, and anyhow, these people need jobs. We need more soldiers. Okay, we saw that. Mr. Trump, the in the country. Oh, this is the eco stuff. Regulations are striking businessmen, the business community, the clean the clean power plants, and nothing but stifling our economy. That's all it's doing, costing us seven seven billion dollars a year. We're just paying for this um, fictitious global warming concept. Uh, now you got ISIS out there and the bad guys. Uh, Let's do something about it. Is that it already? What does that bell mean? 
You're at four, four oh, minutes, thirty oh, seconds. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll get back to these guys then. Um, suspend immigration and new screening procedures. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are bad people. Oh, we're going to let them in there because so they can warn us. That doesn't make, that makes a lot of sense, you know. Come on. And you got to have guns against this ISIS if they come in your neighborhood. This is a Second Amendment right. Everybody knows that. You need judges on the Supreme Court to enforce the laws on the books, not make up their own laws, which they do every day of the week here, you know. Um, and everybody knows that you don't take away guns, but fix the mental health system. Everybody knows that's the approach you should take on this, you know, identification. Uh, last of all, these are the last two. Why Mr. Trump will make a great president, I won't go through all of them. He's got high standards, everybody can see that. He's tough on ISIS, he can't be bought. He's an American first, There's no doubt about that. He's got his priorities straight, he may vague a little bit from time to time, but he, uh, he wrote the book on making deals, he knows how to do this, you know. He'll bring people together. <laughs> uh, he speaks the truth. Hey, put Hillary in prison. Uh, and why will he make a president? Because he said so himself. Here's another one. Why he will, he's committed, he's not, he is not politically correct, but he's not afraid to say what he believes in an honest debate. Come on now, folks. You know, uh, <laughs> and he will not balance his job with golf and other events. And his loyalty is to America. And he'll support the American laws, the Constitution, and the United States. And last of all, Trump, why he will make a great president, because he gets it. He gets it, folks. Come on. Everybody knows it. All right, let's make America great again. Thank you very much, and thanks for your vote. All right, Mr. Brennan has... The floor right now. Remember, one fool at a time. Tell you are, sir. And uh, considering that all his hostile statements about immigrants and Muslims and others, maybe Mr. Trump's motto should be, make America hate again. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Consider what he's done. And that's, that's the, I think the, a good point was made by one of the, the speakers about you know, the environment. I think it's important to keep in mind that yes, we do need to do more for the environment, and that Hillary Clinton is endorsed by the League of Conservation Voters, and her running mate is has a night had a 94 percent pro environment record from the League of Conservation Voters, whereas Trump he says that global warming is a hoax invented by the Chinese, and he chose for a running mate someone who's latest record I've seen was only 4% for the environment. That means, you know, the air we breathe affects our brains, maybe even Alzheimer's, we don't know that for sure, but there's a lot of things out there that are terrible, and Trump is not going to do anything about them. He's, he's very scary on the environment. But also, let me, let me read you what some people who are very worker-oriented have said about the candidates. Millions of people belong to these unions, 38 unions which have endorsed Hillary, Hillary Clinton. The, the AFL CIO says Hillary Clinton has, quote, has a long history of advocating for families and working people, end quote. And the American Federation of Teachers said, quote, Hillary Clinton has spent her entire career working to level the playing field for all Americans to create well-paying jobs for the middle class, including investment in manufacturing, infrastructure, and education. 
Hillary Clinton believes that a strong labor movement is essential to building a strong middle class, supports collective bargaining, and has promised that labor will have a seat at the table, while Donald Trump has fought the unionization of his, of his work businesses and has said he loves right-to-work laws. In other words, right-to-work meaning you can, you can work somewhere and get the benefits of the union, but you don't have to support the union. That's the right-to-work law. All right. And then the Alliance for Retired Americans said this, citing her commitment to expand Social Security, strengthen Medicare, and rein in prescription drug prices, quote, Hillary Clinton has been a champion for retirees throughout her distinguished career. Her life's work exemplifies the Alliance's mission to enhance the quality of life for all Americans. She will oppose efforts to cut privatize or shift Medicare costs to retirees. She has an unmatched record of public service and earned a lifetime score of 100% from the Alliance for her pro-retiree votes as a U.S. Senator. Senator. And here's what 70 winners of the Nobel Prize said. 70 Nobel <coughs> laureates. Quote, to preserve our freedoms protect our constitutional government, safeguard our national security, and ensure that all members of our nation will be able to work together for a better future. It is imperative that Hillary Clinton be elected as the next president of the United States. Imperative. That's Nobel laureates and a lot of other people. So the, the question is, you know, Hillary has already shown she, you know, she found a person that couldn't walk. She knew that person needed a health care plan that would really make sure that that person could walk and get the medical care they needed. That person got the health care, and now that person's a big Hillary supporter. So it's true. As Bernie says, electing Hillary Clinton is not the end. It's the beginning. It means that, okay, we've got someone in office, and 80% of the Democratic platform's standards are praised by Hillary or by Bernie, but that, that doesn't mean anything automatic. We have to go out and work to make sure those things happen. But with Donald Trump, it, we would fight another battle entirely. With Hillary, we've got at least her commitment to do some of these things, and we've got a long record for many years of her working to make sure that kids that needed health care were kept from getting health care because they didn't have enough money. Thank you. That is the kind of Five minutes. that is the kind of record that she has. So I would, I want to encourage you to uh, think about how you can help. And one of the ways you can help is I've got a page here that's got all this a lot of this information on it. If you would like a copy and send it to somebody you know in a battleground state, or you ask me for my email and I can email you this material because there's a lot of people out there that just don't know what. You know, they see Donald Trump, you know, oh, we'll do this, we'll do that. Like the steel worker said, oh, he, he was pretty good. And then they realized he was getting Chinese steel, and they said, wait a minute. So th there's a lot of people out there that don't know any better. But if they get the facts, you talk to them, you don't know. They might change their mind. And if they don't, we're in big trouble. Hillary's ahead right now, but we don't know. Those emails, you know, they're making a big deal out of those emails, but really, you know, there, there, has anybody been hurt from the email? Uh, she admits when she makes mistakes. She admits she made a mistake with email. She made a mistake when she trusted George W. Bush to, to attack Iraq. She's made mistakes over the years, but she's done a lot of good things over the years. More good than, than bad. Otherwise, why would she be getting these good ratings of 100% from the retirees? if she wasn't w watching out for retirees. She's got a record in Congress. She's got experience. Donald Trump thinks he knows better than the generals what to do. I mean, but where's he get his news? Television. All right. You feel like you could run the country based on your television watching? Yes. It's scary, isn't it, that there's people like that that he thinks he's got the world's greatest memory at a, at a, at a, at a rally in Atlanta. He said, Belgium is a beautiful city. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Uh, that that's our president. Can you imagine that? And he doesn't, you know, he doesn't listen to, to that much from other people either. 
You know, he gets up there, I'm going to be Trump. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. i got it all in here. That's the scary part. Well, come on. So when you hear him say something, please remember, one thing, his mouth is open. And please, let me see me after this if you want. I'll be happy to talk to you about things that we, you think we need to say that will help people realize what's at stake in this election. We really, you know, there's a lot of people that don't re really realize that when Trump says something, that it's dangerous. It's dangerous. If you ever read that whole statement from those foreign policy specialists, it's scary the kind of things that they, you know, he was advocating torture of innocent people years ago. How does that affect people? He thinks that Hillary brought ISIS into Iraq. I mean, he's crazy. ISIS developed because the Sunnis were not being treated well by the by the Shia, and we had an agreement to leave our to take our troops out. You can't. They wanted us to take them out. Right? Two minutes. Two minutes. They wanted us to take them out. If you leave troops in a country when they don't want them there, what does that do? Remember Charles Peake, the uh, security uh, terrorism expert at the University of Chicago? He says, the longer you keep troops in a country without their permission, the more likely we are to have another 9-11. But Trump's idea is bully for bully. Barnum and bully. That should be his name. Barnum and bully. He's great for, you know, all you know, he can do all sorts of dramatic things and make you feel like he's really on top of things. But inside that head, scary, scary. Those are some of the things I think we need to know. And, you know, we haven't met the people. I know Charles Paydock got a good letter in the paper in the Tribune some time ago about how, how very important it is to have experienced people in the job of the president, people with governmental experience. And right underneath this letter was a stirring letter from a lady who said she talked to someone and they were really sick, and she asked them, what would you like me to do? She said, I'd like to talk to Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton called her back and talked to her. That's the kind of person Hillary Clinton is. She makes mistakes like all of us, but she's the kind of person that listens. And I think if more of us that she hears from, the more of us that work for her, the better America we're going to have. Really, really important. So if you know someone in one of those key states like Florida, or Indiana, or Iowa, in Wisconsin, maybe I don't know where Ohio. they are. Ohio, yeah, those states. Uh, please, maybe you can talk to them. But I'll, I'll be happy to give you a flyer to send to them that tells you everything I got here, or I give you emails to send to them. There's all. Oh, there's so much important information out there. Thank and you. Please keep going to Fact Checker and put it back, and you'll find. Gosh, he, Trump said it again. He did it again. In fact, I've got a whole page. 15 fact check errors uh, that. He said in his speech about Hillary, 15 errors. 15. Thank you. Thank you. Disconnected comments. Um, I think Charlie said in speaking for Trump, or somebody said there was there was a tremendous disparity between the parties. That's uh, to some degree true. I mean, there is a difference. You can't have a game uh, where you have two political parties year in year out and have them be identical. That wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't do anybody good. It wouldn't do the establishment good. It wouldn't do the ruling class any good. You have to have some differences. And there are some differences on, um, you know, gay marriage, uh, attitudes towards uh, uh, non-whites, quote-unquote minorities, uh, a, a number of things, okay? Um, but those are, are not uh, the core issues. I mean, well, they're important, but uh, there are core issues in, in the economy, uh, foreign affairs, the environment, where uh, these two parties are almost identical twins when you really get down to it. The war on terror has been carried on, the quote unquote war on terror has been carried on very effectively, not in a good sense, in the good sense of effective, but uh, carried on by Obama just as much as, uh, the, as, as Bush. And with civil liberties, he's actually been even worse, okay? 
Um, the record is, is horrendous on, on civil liberties. Fourth Amendment, uh, the Fourth Amendment has been totally got, done away with in this country. So Trump uh, is painted as this, um, as what he is, an, an, an ogre, a monster, uh, a, actually a clown that we shouldn't even be talking about. For this guy to even be uh, a major party uh, representative uh, up there on the stage, you know, uh, asking for our votes to elect him as president, okay, as the leader of this country, supposedly, that is shameful right there. That tells you right, right, right off the bat that the system is, is broken, it's, 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 it's no good, it, it's, it's just laughable. Other countries, uh, people in other countries must be literally wondering what the heck happened to the United States of America, okay? Uh, and then, so the Democrats take advantage of this. Uh, has anybody uh, seen the Saturday Night Live skits on, on, uh, on Trump? How many people have seen those? Okay, everybody should watch those. Uh, Saturday Night Skits with Trump on the debates, okay? And if you'll notice, or you may have noticed, that um, Hillary Clinton in those, there's some truth in those, in those uh, portrayals. Hillary Clinton is just too happy to let, uh, let Trump hang himself. She didn't have to defend herself. She didn't have to explain anything. She didn't have to talk about issues. She, all she has to do is make empty uh, promises, total, totally, you know, total bromides. Okay. Um, so that's the game they're playing. Uh, and the uh, quote unquote leftist, uh, quote unquote progressive, and I and emphasis on the quotes, uh, like uh, on WCPT. Is any, does anybody listen to WCPT? Uh, Stephanie Miller, Tom Hartman. Anybody? I'm just curious. Okay. Um, okay. All that's the like the progressive station in in, in, in Chicago. If you don't, if you all don't know this, or uh, what calls they call themselves progressive. So all of them, from eight in the morning till you know midnight, there is a, a talk show. All they do, I mean, literally, ninety eight percent of the time is talk about how terrible uh, 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 what's his name Trump is. They themselves don't engage in issues. They don't uh, uh, critically examine Hillary Clinton, her actual uh, uh, record, and she's just a clone, maybe even worse than, than Obama. And they don't criticize Obama either. Um, and these people are, are, are really bad news. For instance, uh, she supported the TPP, right, for a long time. And then, oh, all of a sudden, oh, well, you know, we're going to have to look at that. I don't know if she, it was her uh, refusal of it or her, uh, you know, saying that she was going to oppose it, at, you know, very strong. Well, whether it was or not, I guarantee you she's going to reverse that uh, in a heartbeat after, she, after she's elected. And they do this repeatedly. Uh, what, how many promises did Obama make, uh, like closing the Gitmo? He said, he said something to the effect that he was going to close that the day after he was elect, elected, right? And then they, they make the excuse that Congress is holding them back. You know how much power a president has when he really wants to use it, he or she? Right. Actually quite a bit. And that's why they killed Kennedy, because he was actually going to use his presidential power uh, for the good of the, of the country. So um, they are, this election was lost for us, the, Ameri uh, the American people, uh, when Bernie uh, was done away with by the Democrats and the, and the, the media. OK, um, <laughs> you'll remember that. They literally the, the, uh, 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 just ignored uh, Bernie. They, 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 would, they hardly spoke about him at all. He, here's a major party candidate, right? Neck and neck with Hillary Clinton. And they practically, hmm? okay. and they practically didn't mention his name. They, and they certainly didn't uh, talk in any depth about what he was saying about his positions. And he was, he was actually pretty cool until he you know, threw in his lot with, with Hillary. Because after all, he's a Democrat. But he was, he was at least something of a, of a hope. And I was, uh, you know, prog true progressives, many of them, were actually somewhat excited about uh, Bernie. I knew that he wasn't going to uh, become the president. Because even if he was, even if he had won the Democratic nomination, or let me put it this way, if he had won the Democratic nomination, they would have killed him. Or uh, if, they had, if, if they couldn't arrange somehow or other to get rid of him, they would have killed him. Uh, undoubtedly, if you ask me. So um, now look, look at Clinton. Uh, she takes, and the Republicans, of course, say this, and it's true. She takes hundreds of millions of dollars. Her, between her and Bill Clinton, they take hundreds of millions of dollars from the banks um, and uh, financial uh, corporations. Who is going to take hundreds of millions of dollars from anybody and not pretty much uh, do what, either do what they say or, or do things in conformity with what they want? Okay, that's that that 
that's like trying to you know uh, go against gravity. Okay, you're not gonna fly to the moon. Um, <coughs> so Trump uh, was uh, one one thing about Trump, and one reason that he got this far was that he was tapping into anti-establishment sentiment. People, many, many, many people, uh, whether Republicans or Democrats, Bernie obviously Bernie people know this. Um, the establishment is bad news, and, and uh, Hillary is a, a, a through and through an, uh, establishment candidate. Um, so at least Trump uh, tapped into that. Um, so, and I guess I could go into some details about that, but I'll probably just uh, carry on. So that's pretty much what I had to say. This this election is just the worst sham ever. Thank you, and please do stay up. Yep. So now we're going to do the, the Q&A session. Testing. I think only the one mic will work. Okay. You don't think that this will work either? Or? I think those work with that other thing there. Hello. Okay. I don't think we got that set up. Uh, I'd like to thank our three gentlemen for uh, debate. Very good. Yeah, so you guys show promise. <laughs> we're, we're at the question and answer period, and um, raise your hand and tell me who the question is directed towards. And uh, this is the time to have questions. Yes, ma'am. My it, my question is directed towards Charlie. Okay, so during the debates, Mr. Trump kept denying is allegation Hillary's allegations to what he says about um, the attacks that he's gotten in the news from women what do you have to say about that well this kind of kiss and tell stuff I don't know if it relates to the issues confronting American society right here uh, you know you know, uh, this is a lot of these things are long ago and far away. I mean, uh, to, it's kind of late in the day to look into the reach of these allegations. Not saying that women should be uh, exploited uh, by any means, not to sanction that, but these kind, I don't know if these really merit the attention that they're given. Uh, you know, I mean, there are, how do you, you there is a, a time frame on these situations. Now, we've even got one from overseas. A uh, dozen women come forward. I explore each of them. You, you're entitled to your day in court, you know. And if Mr. Trump says that these are not the case, then quite frankly, it's he said, she said. How do you resolve it? Paul Racina, you had a... the proof is on you, the accuser, not him. Paul Racina, you had a question. I have a question for Ted. Mm -hmm. I can agree with you. Neither of the candidates are much good, but then who are we to vote for? Yeah. Uh, I, I thought I... Didn't I say it? Maybe I didn't say it explicitly. Nobody. You don't go to the polls. You don't go to the... You don't go to this... Um, uh, into this election at all. You tell, and that's uh, a, a, in effect a vote against the establishment, against the system. And by the way, let me answer this a little in a little bit more detail. The Constitution of the United States revolves around electing a president, Congress, uh, you know, uh, Senate, uh, etc. Right? That whole system of voting for uh, somebody to be in office and to have power over you is is wrong, is is bad, is is the core of our problem. That entire system it has to go. The representative system. Uh, sir. Uh, H Hillary wrote a book, It Takes, it takes a Village, <coughs> and that's about social welfare in the United States. And uh, all this Obamacare, all this social welfare, and now she's talking about making it worldwide. Who's paying for this? Who's going to pay for this? So they, they doubled the, be uh, the, uh, the debt of Obama. Now she wants to have a, a, a third term. You. Who's going to pay Liberal. for Hillary's? Socialism. Yeah, he's going to pay for all this socialism. Step up to the mic, please. Thank you. 
there's an enormous amount of wealth co concentrated in the richest people in this country. They, their, their share of the wealth is going like this. The ordinary person is going along like this. If we tax fairly, we can do a lot. As far as all, there's other things we can do, like with the health care system, although the world is not there yet. But if we had Medicare for all, we would save an enormous amount of money just by cutting out a lot of waste. Does Medicare for All dilute my Medicare right now? I would pay 30 years to get in Medicare. Now someone's going to come tomorrow and get in Medicare, single payer. They're going to take, they, they dilute our health care. No, it'd be better. It would, I'm talking about improved Medicare for All. So for, you get your ears, the, your eyes covered, your everybody. No, for the new people. I've been paying 30 years to get in. I got very good Medicare. They're going to put new people in, and they're going to dilute our health care. For There's the no reason to dilute it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, everybody, you're going to get your, you're going to get better health care because they're going to cover all needed things, not just you know, you're going to cover your eyes. You have death you panels, know. death panels. No, you know, that's, that's if a, you're going to die within ten years, you don't get the uh, uh, health care. No, you don't get the true. knee uh, replacement. Okay. All right, next question. <clears throat> well, I'm going around no the room like this. So, Ilana, I just would like a small comment, if I may. No, it's a no, question and answer no. period. Okay, fine. So, question: What what uh, Donald didn't tell the truth? Trump, tell the truth. I respect and I like Donald because he is not afraid to tell people the truth. What they think about it. And Can you prove that truth. Donald lied? Do you I'm believe sorry? that he said that he is opposed to the Iraq war before it started? Whatever. 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 Said, That's an like example of a he, lie. Whatever he said, I like what he said, and he tell straight the truth. He not do this, you know? I'll tell not you what. Level, you I've know? got a whole page I'll share with you after this. I don't want to. I don't want 15 lines. I know in other sources, okay? I, I'd, I'd like to add to that. Sources. Among those that, the politicos that track this stuff, and I've got to put down this, this this misleading information that 91% of the things that Mr. Trump says are not accurate. That's completely not true. Mm -hmm. and that's not accurate. Very controversial. <laughs> All right. Um, As a matter of fact, yes, less sir. than he almost never says, they say he almost never says anything <laughs> this is that's true. Uh, <laughs> this is a candidate. Ted, Ted Aranda would also like to answer. Do you believe him when he says nobody respects women more than he does? <laughs> he claims that nobody, nobody respects women more than he does. This guy, this guy who literally, who literally uh, brags about attacking women, oh, sexual assault. He's got Maybe a 13-year-old. Think about how they look, how they're acting, and uh, he very uh, A dozen <coughs> women have come out publicly, and why would they do this? They were paid uh, they, by they, Columbia. Uh, to, and, and said that um, he uh, literally attacked them. Do you, do you, not, do you believe Trump over those women? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, going around the room, ma'am. He's a friendly guy. What's the deal? Don't you think that uh, one should vote for a third party, uh, perhaps a socialist party, or anything that means to just, you know, let the let the elite know that. No. You know, no. All right, so uh, Ted, why shouldn't you vote third party or write in candidate? In um, the last time a, a third party, or uh, uh, yeah, third party won, was uh, I believe the Republican Party in the 19, 1850s or 60s, uh, 60s. probably the 50s, 1850s. Okay, and they uh, they became the mainstream Republican Party of today. Um, the last time that any uh, third party made a serious run um, at it, um, well, at, at na national power, was the Populist Party in like 1896 or something like that. Okay, their third parties um, in this country uh, are total, <laughs> totally dead in the water. They they don't have a chance in, in in hell. They don't have a snowball chance in hell. You, to play this game, you need big money. You need support of elites. You have to play the media game. The media is, is part of the establishment there in on the game on this on the deception uh, of of, being, of this being a natural democracy. There's no democracy whatsoever. So third parties are are, are, are utterly useless. The problem is systemic. It, it goes very deep. It goes to voting for somebody to have power over you. If there was a, th a viable third party, let's say the socialist party, I wouldn't vote for any damn socialist. I wouldn't vote for anybody. Um. Voting for a third party in the Independent Voters of Illinois, we make no endorsement for anyone who does not put together, like he used the term, a viable campaign. 
unfortunately, in this election, a vote for a third party is regarded as one half a vote for Trump. And the Greens themselves, I am the Green, I said until such time as we can put together a viable campaign, maybe we should stick to environmental type issues and forego the electoral process. And the same thing goes for the Green Party. Now the only thing about this campaign is that Mr. Trump has not been able to put together himself a viable campaign. Those things I showed you just showed up on the internet. The election's like next week. Like this campaign does not have its act together. And like he was saying, some of the details there that you look for, and I did this thing on other things, I did research on other topics. It's kind of sad how some of the people have absolutely no positions whatsoever and nothing posted on the internet, and yet they want you to decide to vote for them. I, I follow things like transportation. The Libertarians and the Greens had absolutely nothing regarding those issues that they had taken a position on. That's what I mean. These are not viable campaigns. Yes, sir. Uh, for all the candidates, what would you do about persons with uh, oversized cigars? <laughs> okay, the question for the three candidates is what would you do about persons with oversized cigars? Oh, could I just add, there's literature on the back tables and posters, and these things a lot of people may not be aware of what they are, little stickers, but if you take one of these and you find a button at home like I did, you can put it on the button and you got yourself a homemade Hillary button. Anyone else want to address the cigar issue? I don't, I don't get it. Am I missing something? Did you get that? No, no. Let's get to the okay. libertarian guy. Mr. Jonathan. Dave? Yeah. Uh, New York Times newspaper recently said that 9% of the United States population decided the two major party candidates in the 2016 presidential campaign. I want to hear from all three. Uh, what more would you need to know? to at least, at the very minimum, justify peaceful democratic mass mobilization for a no confidence vote, meaning none of the above. Could you, could you repeat the, uh, the beginning of that, 9%? The New York percent? Times uh, newspaper, that's my source for this uh, fact. So this isn't just me making this up, this is, this is available online. It said 9% of a country of 324 million people, 221 of million of those people eligible to vote, 9% of the population decided the 2016 presidential major party candidates of the Republican Party being Mr. Trump and the Democratic Party being <coughs> Secretary Trump. So could you comment, what more would you need? Ted, I pretty much know where you stand, so I like your answer. What more would you need to say it's time for mass mobilization, peaceful democratic mass mobilization, or no confidence vote, none of the above? Go back to the drawing board. All right, so the question was if only 9% um, of the American public put Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump as the two major running, uh, the, the two uh, candidates, major candidates, uh, what more do you need to justify a no confidence vote? Which, if I could quickly add, is available to Americans. It's called the right in space, you write no confidence. It's you not just write available no in other parts of the industrialized world, it is available right now to United States voters. I was involved in some, what? I, was, I was involved in a, a don't vote uh, a campaign uh, in the last uh, presidential election. Um, it was called Boycott Election, or, uh, run by Boycott Election Advocates, if I recall correctly. And the idea was to lower the percentage of people who, uh, who vote. Um, essentially, uh, this no-confidence uh, campaign. Um, the, historically, voting uh, percentages have been um, plummeting in the United States for decades now, and there's no end in sight. And that's because people understand um, deeply, uh, if not, if not uh, explicitly, they might not be able to philosophize about it, uh, but they understand that this, this system is rigged, it's a sham. Look at what happened to Bernie uh, in the Democratic uh, primaries. 
he, he was he, his uh, candidacy was basically sabotaged by the Dem by the Democratic National Committee, and that that's pretty much known. So the system is not working, and people know that, and that's why they're not voting. And it's a good idea to do just that: do not vote. All right, uh, All right Mr. Brennan, or okay. Oh, these people sit around, and then uh, people like me have been working for a political party for decades and writing things for the newspapers and stuff like that. And you show up and say, well, we don't like the, the candidates you put forward. I mean, these people don't get any telling you they don't vote, they don't show up, they don't work for campaigns, and then they bellyache about those that we put up there. Well, that's just too bad if you don't like it. Stay home and watch it on TV, the results of those of us who are involved in the political process. I don't really care. As a matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, the less people that vote, the better. Because you got people who know nothing, absolutely whatsoever, right. taking votes away from people who do know what's going on, show up to forums like this, and I show you there's 25 people here, and there's 25 numbskulls out at the goddamn ballpark right now. <laughs> who are gonna vote? and nullify anything we do here. Yeah. 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 Go on to your ball Get on the bus, you can still catch the game. Uh, just briefly, I would like to add that you know, the 91% were not prevented from voting. Uh, they chose not to vote. And unfortunately, that's, that's a lack of democracy. But I think we have to go who people choose and encourage everybody to get out and vote for a candidate that can win. All right. Yeah, he's out working for candidates. All he right. Um, Dave. Dave. Yeah, how many calls you made? Yes. You. Uh, one of the speakers cited uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, I would like to remind you that Saturday Night Live uh, does spoofs on any and all of the candidates that they can. And uh, I would also bring up the fact that Is this uh, they, a question, sir? Yes. Okay. I would also bring up the fact that they made all manner fun of Ronald Reagan when he ran, who turned out to be one of our better presidents. So my question is, ha, 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 ha. So my question is, <laughs> so my question is, hello? Dave has the floor. What is your question, Dave? So my question is, citing someone like Saturday Night Live for, for political support, isn't that tantamount to citing super circus? <laughs> First of all, I was deciding well, them not as quote unquote political support. I'll just make a, a, an offhand comment um, showing that, and by the way, Saturday Night Live has a liberal or semi progressive bent if you get, if you get behind the, uh, the, you know, the, the spoofs. Um, I was just pointing out that in those charades, there was, uh, in, in those spoofs, there was some truth, um, which was that Hillary Clinton doesn't have to defend herself, herself if you bring out an absolute uh, monster like uh, like uh, Trump. Um, so Hillary Clinton has gotten a, a pass, a complete pass, uh, totally, uh, almost not totally, but largely unscrutinized and uncriticized um, in this election. That's that was my point. And Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live uh, avert uh, to that, uh, that 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 point. Questions, uh, Gene. Uh, I got a question for Mike Brennan. So a lot of uh, seniors agree with uh, Secretary Clinton on issues like affordable housing, Social Security, uh, Medicare, uh, racial justice, immigration. Suppose she wins the election and then changes her mind. What do you say to that? Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 possible. It's, that's why it's up to us, to, as Bernie would say, it, the election is only the beginning. We have to get ourselves together and go after the candidate that wins and make sure they do what we need. Thank you. Can I, can I answer that as well? Yes, sir. You're the right. Uh, I strongly disagree uh, with what uh, Mr. Brennan said. How the heck are we supposed to push these people? Okay, Once they have power, they have power. That's what the whole 
business is about. That's what the whole election is about. That's why they, they're the president. Okay? They have a hell of a lot of power. How are we supposed to, quote unquote, push them? How far did we push Obama? How far did, we, did uh, people in 1968 push LBJ? He wanted the goddamn Vietnam War and he got it for another uh, 10, uh, not 10, uh, another several years. Okay, it seemed like 10. It went on forever. He kept on escalating, 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 escalating. People were out on the streets from 1968, uh, even before 1968, but certainly by then, there were, there were hundreds of thousands of people in the streets, all kinds of protests, all kinds of civil disobedience. It kept on going, <laughs> killing a million P uh, Vietnamese. And I could replicate that example in other areas, okay? Um, you, you don't push these people. That's, why, that's what the whole uh, process is about, getting somebody in power to do what they want. And then you have no control. They don't answer to you. This is not, this is not a, a referendum, it, uh, it's not a, what is it called when, when, when you know, the people above consult the, the, their, their underlings? No, they're not consulting us, okay? They do whatever the heck they want. Pat Butler. Thank you. Yeah, uh, to the gentleman who said uh, don't vote, it only encourages the others, uh, what's your alternative? You talk about uh, eliminating, uh, you know, staying away from the polls, not voting for either of the candidates, imperfect as both may be. Uh, but in the real world, uh, what would you replace this very, very imperfect, uh, user-driven system uh, with? I mean, something practical now that gets the job done. Um, I would um, institute a system as a you, you all, many of you have heard me say this before, but uh, it's, the, it's my answer. Um, I would substitute this quote-unquote representative system with what's called a direct democracy, where people uh, have assemblies, okay, like the Athenian assembly, except that it wouldn't just be one, it would be very many, and people would get together and they, they would discuss issues put on the agenda by executive councils. The executive councils, and okay, the assemblies would be everybody. The executive councils would be randomly uh, selected people of like 500 people, let's say, at, at every level, at the community level, at the state level, uh, at the national level. And they would, uh, these random people, which would mean ordinary people, would put uh, uh, issues on the agendas and, uh, and people at, in assemblies throughout the country would vote on those. And that would be direct democracy. We would, we would have no politicians, no, no uh, um, uh, officials, uh, public officials above us. At this point, wouldn't we still be debating whether to go to war with Spain? Ma'am, did you have a question? Yes, my question was exactly, you know, in, in, in those lines, and um, just a comment on uh, well, uh, what is you Q &A just now. said, uh, and, and, and that is, after years and years of volunteering for campaigns and, you know, and all that, what makes you think that direct democracy is going to work any, any better than than the system that we have now. You get four people in the room and you'll get five different opinions. And in, in the meantime, we have a government to run. People, you know, money is appropriated. You know, you're talking about issues of taxation. Okay. You know, the environment How can you and all justify that. direct democracy? What makes you think it's going to work better? Okay. Okay. Direct democracy in Scandinavia. Well, actually, a, a better uh, example is, is, is ancient Athens. Uh, that, so this is not a hypothetical question. Yeah, when you, yes. When you look at uh, the, uh, the Athenian system, people assembled and they decided on issues. They didn't take forever. They, uh, they were an effective, uh, it was an effective method of governance. If you don't know history, you should stop laughing and, and read about it. Well, why can I ask any questions? You can't because you're a presenter. Can't give you a All right, ask a question. Sir, at any given time, and there's an average of about 2,300 pieces of legislation in the United States Congress. How in the world do you expect? I have often asked congressmen, I said, how in the world, even with the staff, are you able to pursue what each of these pieces of legislation is? Now, you expect an average citizen to do this without benefit of a staff. Do you expect people, how do you, this is, okay. how are they supposed to know exactly <laughs> what it is, okay, it is, is, is the piece of legislation is complex, to be paid to beat Charlie. it and understand it? And Ask your question, Charlie. Well, how are they supposed to know all these laws? Okay, this um, com alleged complexity 
which is actually just <laughs> mass confusion and uh, oftentimes intentional by lawyers. You know, there are pieces of legislation that are drawn up by lawyers, in fact, most legislation is probably drawn up by lawyers, that are, are made to benefit one particular uh, rich person or corporation, or corporation. but it's, it's couched in language that makes it seem like universal. And this floods, uh, this kind of legislation floods the, the, the legislative agenda. This kind of, of, of um, uh, really nonsensical uh, uh, legislation uh, in huge copious amounts is a product of this system, of this representative system that is run by lawyers and rich people. Uh, it, so uh, direct democracy uh, with common people involved would naturally uh, have much simpler questions. They would get to the heart of the matter. What do we do about, uh, you know, this country? Is, is it actually uh, an aggressor or do we have to invade it or not? Uh, what do we do about uh, global warming? Are we going to shut down the oil companies from, uh, you know, pulling up the oil? Uh, the questions that we have to ask, uh, that uh, we have to ask ourselves and answer are actually uh, fairly simple when you get down to when you get down to it. So this complexity is uh, is 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 uh, a product of, of the foolish kind of system that we have. The energy policy of the United States. All right. Is Has anyone well, not asked? Well, yeah. Do we, yes. do we need do we need more trains or not? Charlie, 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 do we need more uh, trains or not? Yeah. That's the kind of question that we should be asking. Or should we, or should we build more highways for more cars? The questions are relatively simple. <laughs> These okay, are so adult questions. And we're adults. We're all adults. Has anyone not asked a question? Yes, sir. What do you do when you elect someone like a Hillary Clinton who instead of does what she wants, will just do whatever all her donors want? The real problem is the... Uh, the whole lobbyist system. Michael Brennan, what is Hillary going to do after she's elected? Well, she says she supports the... No, walk over to the mic, sir. No, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Uh, she, she says she supports no. Citizens United. Which was, we, so we, in other words, repealing Citizens United. Get out of here. Please take it outside. Sit down or get out of here. Sit down or get out of here. Please take it outside. Sit down or get out of here. Please take it outside. Sit down or get out of here. Please take it outside. Please, please. Miss. You're getting us thrown out again. Is this the last time. Sit down or get out. I pay my bill, but you pay your bill. And I appreciate it. All right, we got to get her out of here. I'd like to fin this finish my answer. I'd like to finish my answer. Yes, yep. yes sir, please do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There, yeah, there, that is a real problem you brought up about the power of the wealthy, and, and I don't, there's no simple answer, but one piece that's encouraging is that Hillary Clinton says she supports the repeal of Citizens United, which, which unleashes a lot of wealthy power, but it's not the whole answer. I, I agree with you. And I, I wish I knew some answer. That, that's where people power comes in, and I guess I'll be looking forward to what Gene's put back on the table. He's got some more ideas on how we use our power. Because eventually, they always have to come back to us in an election. And that's why it's important to be informed and to want and vote, even though it may not be the perfect you know, choice of candidates. If you don't vote, you're, you're handing over the election to someone that's very dangerous. Yeah, this is one of the only countries in the industrialized world. Ah, uh, I use that. Now. This is quite yeah. That's the real problem here. When you get politicians who answer to their lobbyists, whether they're rich people or unions, especially when you have track, when you have the track record of the Clintons, yeah. the most corrupt uh, people who would be in the have been in the Oval Office. That's a pretty sweeping statement to say they're the most corrupt of all. I mean, there's a lot of people that have endorsed them, like the retirees, who are not going to be endorsing a corrupt person. They're endorsing someone that supports Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid, and a lot of other good programs. So it's, uh, you, you might, and I probably will agree with you, that there are some mistakes that the Clintons have made, and that Hillary Clinton would probably make some more mistakes. You don't have the perfect candidate, but that's the best we can do. Is anyone waiting to ask their first question? Does anyone have a question they and hasn't asked one yet? Well, while we wait for that, can I further answer his question? Uh, yes, sir, you can. So there's everybody who wants to ask a question has had a chance to ask one question. Um, to further answer you, uh, the answer is that we can't uh, hold Hillary Clinton to account. She's um, going to be the president, and she's going to do what she wants. And, 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 and she can uh, reverse uh, course. Um, 
Bill Clinton uh, ran against, effectively against NAFTA, uh, at least saying that he wouldn't vote for it or he wouldn't push it unless it had very strong environmental and, and workers' protections. Well, that was thrown out uh, immediately uh, when he was elected, and he, and he did, in his first uh, um, few weeks or months in office, he pushed for NAFTA uh, extremely hard, if, you, if some of you remember, uh, and that was his top priority after uh, uh, um, um, running against NAFTA. And I told you about LBJ. He ran as the quote-unquote peace candidate. Okay, he was going to stop the Vietnam War. In fact, I think, uh, uh, what's his name, um, Richard Nixon did the same thing. These people do what they want, which is to answer, and they're in, in bed with the, the lobbyists, as you say, and the rich people who control the whole thing and, and control the lobbyists. For every example, there's a counterexample. example. will never rise exactly. up truth. For America, there's Scandinavia. All right, uh, questions. Uh, right now, it's almost 8 o'clock. Um, we have to be out of here at 8.45. I'm going to take a handful of questions more, and then we're going to move on to our rebuttal session. Uh, questions? Yes, sir, you had wanted. Well, there's, there's uh, only about 40,000 Islamofascists. Obama and Hillary, <clears throat> why, why can't they stop them? We've got a coalition of 30 countries. Trump said he's going to stop them immediately. He's going to stop them. Obama, eight years, he hasn't done anything. I think he's a Muslim himself. He comes from a Muslim country. His parents. How come the United States has not been able to stop the Obama fascists when they really are a minority? Well, for one thing, a recent article in the Week magazine pointed out that ISIS is a monarchy territory they control has been limited considerably. So there is some progress. And I, I don't have all the answers. I think Hillary has a plan that we really have to stop them as best we can from recruiting. And that involves, first of all, let's call them, first of all, let's not call them Islamic. That just is advertising. In other words, for example, remember that the, the Christian, there were Christian groups. They called themselves Christians, but they were the Ku Klux Klan. We didn't even let them call themselves Christians. Why should we let these people call themselves Muslims? They like to think they're Muslims, but let's call them ISIS. What about the ones that come who believe in Sharia law? They don't believe in the American justice system. Who's they now? The, the Islamists that come here who believe in Sharia law. Well, that's, a lot of them that's, do. That's, okay, that's, okay, the people that are in this country are, that are terrorists, uh, and that's another story. But most of the terrorists in this country, most of the deeds like that, have been done by white terrorists. The refugees. They're, uh, American they're, terrorists have caused more trouble in this country than the Muslims have even dreamed of causing problems. Well, they've maybe dreamed of some of them. Okay, we're talking about America's inability to fight terrorism. Ted, do you, or, or Charles, do you want to add to this or go to another question? Well, I'll just say briefly, I've talked about this in, in, in other presentations at some length. There is no uh, Islamic terrorist threat to the United States. There are essentially, for all practical purposes, no Islamic terrorists in the United States. The real terrorists are, uh, are U.S. government and military slaughtering people in the millions, not hundreds, not thousands, millions. In uh, Iraq, uh, that whole uh, Iraq war killed uh, at least a million uh, people for no good reason whatsoever. Those people that, uh, uh, that uh, carried out, uh, planned and carried out that war should, uh, should be uh, in jail. Those people like that were hung uh, at the Nuremberg trials. Okay, that's the, 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 the core uh, uh, um, uh, principle, or the principle of, of uh, non-aggression. You cannot be invading countries for no good reason and slaughtering people in, in, in huge numbers. And that's what we've done in country after country uh, in the Middle East. So if you want to talk about terrorists, you have to talk about the United States government. But you so I'm a terrorist, aren't they chopping off the heads of the Christians and kidnapping the 400 uh, Muslim women and making them slaves? A lot of that is probably false flag like many other things. Well, Mr. Trump said, you find out where ISIS is and you carpet bomb that country. And that'll take care of it. You carpet bomb it, as we used to do in World War II, which, of course, is, there's sometimes collateral damage. But, you know, I mean, we have to eliminate this threat, you know. I uh, don't you think that electing someone with foreign affairs experience, this is an international issue, uh, would be the course to take. Uh, someone with some prior experience 
in it. Uh, the Mike the candidate. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, it doesn't offer of an. And you want an answer to how we solve something okay. that's taken a uh, hundred years to evolve? Well, the United States, of all their military, we have the strongest special forces. Uh, Obama and Hillary are putting transgender, uh, they're putting women in the special forces, and that weakens, he's weakened the United States all around, but this especially the This is a rebuttal, sir. We're still Jared, in question and answer. You're Jared, very welcome to do a rebuttal. Who else has a question, or should I, we move on to rebuttals? Rebuttal. 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 All right. Uh, I would again like to thank my um, speakers. Right. Great speakers right. today have done a superb job, and sir, you are welcome to come up here and, and give a rebuttal. Uh, it looks like Jonathan's going to have the first rebuttal. Uh, I'm going to give about five minutes a person and... See how many people want to do it first. How many people do want to do a rebuttal? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Sir, are you going to have a rebuttal? You're welcome to. Okay, uh, I'm going to get five minutes a person, and if we're tight, then I'm going to cut you off. But, Jonathan. Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? Expediency asks the question, is it politics? Conscience asked the question, is it right? When Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that quote, he was challenging all of us on earth, not just Americans, but especially Americans, to make a decision, do we want to be a civilization or do we want to be psychopaths? Now you would say that's an extraordinary statement to make. We're not psychopaths. I mean, we don't do terrible things. Nagasaki, Hiroshima. We can be a civilization even better, higher quality life than Scandinavia if we just have the will. It's literally like this little tiny speed bump that you can see a mile away and prepare yourself for if that speed bump still hinders you from representative participatory democracy as exhibited in countless examples throughout the industrialized world. People here tonight have done so much research and yet know so little about so much about countries like Iceland, countries like Sweden. I'll just repeat the list again. We've said this a million times. Countries like Norway, countries like Finland, countries like Denmark, countries like Australia, countries like France, Spain, Italy. Portugal. Are those countries perfect? No. Martin Luther King Jr. was not asking all of us when he asked that question for all of us to be utopian. He was not asking us to be perfect robots. He was asking us to be a human civilization that stops slaughtering each other, stops stealing from each other, and stop desecrating the sacred air, land, and water of Mother Earth. It was a basic dialectic question. Who do you want to be in the 21st century? And he was looking forward way ahead of most people in the 1960s. Okay, I have a coin in my hand right here, and I'm going to flip it. Or actually, I'm going to ask somebody in the audience, who would like to flip a coin for me, just to make a brief example during my rebuttal that will take less than 10 seconds? Who would like to volunteer to flip this coin? Ted, keep the coin. <laughs> my coin. Okay, go, ahead, go ahead and flip the coin. And let's just say, for example, uh, Ted will get a free Cubs baseball cap tonight if he wins, and I'll get a free Cubs baseball cap in honor of the 2016 World Series. First time in 108 years our beloved Chicago team is in the World Series. Just down the block at Wrigley Field if, if I win. So, Ted, what does the coin say? <clears throat> Tails, 99% lose. Okay, you know what? I'm a really nice guy. I feel pretty good about myself. Uh, go ahead and flip it again, but you have to call it. You have to call it. What, what you want it to be. Okay. It says tails. Nine, not tails, 99% nine, nine, lose. And that's pretty much, thank you, thank you. That's pretty much example of the way our elections go. Heads the 1% win, tails the 99% lose. 
The wealthy, powerful, influential owners and overseers and oligarchs decide whenever in history they are appropriately nervous, and if you think they aren't nervous, look at the guy they have running for the Republican Party on stage. That's not confidence. That's faking confidence to conceal extreme terror and angst of what the people are possible, what's pe possible in people power politics with social media right now. They decide whenever in history they are appropriately nervous about maintaining their status as the chosen gods of the galaxy, they cleverly and skillfully deliberately orchestrate our conditions of our communities and our collective budget to be in a crisis which predictably prompts a panic. There's going to be an economic crash, that bubble's going to burst sometimes, very soon possibly. We know this. It happened in 2007, 2008. All the conditions are even more extreme now in 2016. One minute. One minute. I, I'm watching. This very precise, they very precisely enact this crisis in the form of dividing one half of the everyday people from the other. They can afford to lose one side of the Trojan horse of corporate theft, corporate murder, and corporate pollution because the competition is already decided before it's already begun. Now, I, I don't have anything else to say other than uh, there's a great thing by Noam Chomsky. It's on page 116 of Power Systems about voting for the lesser of two evils. Uh, it depends on where you are and who you are. and whether you're willing to ask yourself some tough questions like Martin Luther King asked us in the 1960s before the United States of America executed his honesty. All right, very good. Very good. Don't, don't vote for them, young guys. I'd like to uh, thank the three presenters. As I figured, it was a lot of fun, I got to admit. Uh, of course, uh, people in the audience, I see a bunch of you. I know something about politics, but I know a lot of you know a lot more. But in a lot of ways, we are not a very democratic country. Just let that set in. And in this election, we haven't heard much about the issue. What should we do about this? Well, I think we ought to do something democratic and we ought to stick to the issues. The answer, at least a sliver of the answer, is movement politics. In movement politics, you, you marry community organizing to electoral politics so that you work for the election of somebody that you agree with on the issues. And then after the election, we had my own question and another question. If they change their mind, you let them know. You have to, you cannot stop. In movement politics, there's no end to it. You just have to keep on. We cannot, I, at least I, do not trust the President of the United States, our mayor, our governor, our head of our county a little bit more. She's a Unitarian. Okay. I admit it. I trust her a little bit more. But if you go into movement politics, yes, we are not going to throw out Hillary Clinton. Not at this point, no, no. But how about, how would Mike Quigley feel? Well, he might feel a little less wiggly. Uh, maybe we can influence him. We got him to a session. So Jane Adams Senior Caucus has set up another organization. Jane Adams Senior Caucus of 501c3. Jane Adams Seniors in Action is a 501c4. We can endorse candidates. We are going to work on Election Day. I know they're not perfect, but for Tammy Duckworth and Hillary Clinton. And after the election, if either of those two change, we're going to do what we can. We'll certainly do more about uh, uh, Tammy Duckworth and Hillary Clinton. This is only a start. 
but I suggest it's better than not voting at all. If you don't vote at all, people don't know why the hell you didn't vote. They don't know you vote, didn't vote because you're fed up with the system or you're simply lazy. I would say we should in, de, indulge in our society or get out. Frankly, I don't have the guts to leave. I'm staying here and I'm fighting. Thank you. All right. All right. Yeah, he's going to fight. Yeah. 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 yeah, anyone want to fight? My name is Raj Patel. I speak for myself. Everybody seems to here want to go to heaven and uh, <coughs> they don't want to buy a ticket. <laughs> and uh, and uh, everybody want to be expert, but they don't don't have a know how on the issues. <laughs> the United States government, no matter whoever gets elected, that person is going to make a mistake. That going to person going to do some good things. But uh, what we can do is that we can improve her performance a little better by selecting the right candidate. And what, is, what are the right, right uh, quality of a right candidate? And I think Hillary Clinton pretty well meets it in a long, long time. I mean, Bill Clinton was a good, can, good person. He was a bad person, but a good candidate and a good president. Because uh, he knew the issues, he can articulate them, he can deal with opposition and come to a conclusion. Barack Obama could not do it. Okay, Barack Obama is not a nicer guy than Bill Clinton. But he could not do things what Bill Clinton can do. Okay? So this is this is the way we should be looking for. So how we are going to achieve a result, result orientation. See and it's not going to be what you want always. There are we are not the only one. There are two hundred countries in the world and we have to deal with them. And we are going to say we are the only one who are right, like a clean like a Trump implies, we are really trouble. Because we cannot survive by ourselves, okay? We want to, we want to, we, we are, our living standard is better because we get lots of goods from China and poor countries. Suppose we don't get any merchandise from China. Do you know something? Your living standard will drop. You will not be able to afford daily shower. These are the reality, okay? Now, no matter what, whatever you, you say, that, well, you know, he's a bitch and he's a warlock and what, it doesn't going to work. I mean, I would have liked Trump, but Trump came up with a quality that he did, he did not have no know-how and issues. He did not know the issue, and he did not have a capacity to negotiate, deal with people, and respect people. You know, the, what is good about Hillary Clinton? You ask Republican senators, Democratic senators, independent, everybody, they respect her. They respect her knowledge, they respect her values, they respect her ability to talk one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and this is important. Do we want to work our government to work or do we want to worry about, well, you know, where is my nine cents? Okay? This, this is the real thing. And if we don't understand, it's not going to work. See, our founding father never wanted this kind of democracy we have right now. Okay? Every Tom and Dick and Harry, okay, who may not have a high school, high school uh, graduation degree, okay? And he won't, he won't always say in a government, it's not going to happen. Okay? The black community, okay, they, they, they want slavery back because they are asking to do, do this for us, do that for us. But they are not, what right thing to do is that they should say, hey, I can do it. And go work hard, get education, do it. And the same way is going to happen in our country. Our country, we have to make some hard, hard decision, okay. Our, our population are uneducated even when they are educated. Our population is becoming lazy. They are not hardworking. They are getting fat. Okay, and they want things they cannot afford. Okay, let's be realistic. Okay, you cannot want this thing in your, your own house. Okay, you have, you have three kids, and they all come asking you, "Hey, daddy, you know, I'm, I, I want an iPhone," and the other one says, "No, you know, I got, I got to a big studio." You know, you cannot afford it for all, all your four kids, whatever they want. It there are choices, and you have to. You have to deal with those choices that what you cannot afford, we cannot afford, and that, that is the reality. And look here, who is, who are the, the, I'm going to be very hard on white people. White people have let this country down, white Christian people. Because look, 
Indians don't have problem. They are getting rich every day, richer and richer. Jews don't have problem. What in the hell they are doing? Oh, Pakistani one getting rich here. What no? Do their country may be falling apart. They are getting rich. Why are they getting rich? Do you know something? Hey, they stress education, 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 education. They stress hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. They stress networking, 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 and getting along with the people. Okay. Now these are it's a very simple thing. And do you know something? Why America was great? Because America was like that, and America is no longer like that. Thank you. Americans are lazy. They're a bunch of lazy. Our other rebuttal said about us being a democracy. We're not a democracy. We're a republic. And uh, with this election, we don't have a good choice. They both candidates stink. But you got the most corrupt woman running for president against a guy that sometimes he seems to know what he's talking about, but half the time he goes way off. And you know what? No matter what happens, we're screwed. <laughs> As Daniel Patrick Moynihan famously said, we are entitled to our own opinion. We're not entitled to our own facts. So when, when uh, Donald Trump says he's for the little guy and that we should trust him, you know, with uh, the economy and with foreign affairs, my answer is no way. No way in hell. How can someone who purports to be for the working person refuse to negotiate a contract at, at one of his, you know, hotels in Las Vegas after, after the
Nate is now closed.